Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. The most striking Christmas card I have received in many years came with the headline, History is Crowded with Men Who Would Be Gods. Underneath were the images of nine powerful historical figures, Alexander the Great, Tutankhamun, Julius Caesar, Maharishi Yogi, Adolf Hitler, Vladimir Lenin, Napoleon Bonaparte, Gautama Buddha, and Mao Zedong. Even if you had flunked world history, you'd still recognize some of those names. Now, who would deny that these individuals aspired to reign as gods with supreme power and authority? The Caesars proclaimed themselves gods and demanded the worship of a god. But what made the card unique was the message inside which read, but only one God who would be man. Underneath was the reproduction of a Dutch painting depicting the infant Jesus in the manger with Mary and Joseph looking on. Amazing but true is the fact that many would be God, but only one God would be man. Theologians call it the Incarnation. That's a word that comes from Latin which means in flesh. Question. Did God really become man? And if so, did God cease to be God? The record of Scripture is profound and clear at the same time. It says God the Father loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. Stop. Now think about that for a moment. God the Son became willing to lay aside His role as God sitting at the right hand of the Father to be born of human flesh. The upside of that is simple. God understands my weariness, my heartache, my pain, my suffering, even the limitations of my joy and happiness. God became man, completely human, completely normal. The babe born at Bethlehem grew to manhood, experiencing the emotional ups and downs of adolescence, and became an adult male, as completely physical as any male today. John gives us this record so beautifully in the introduction to the gospel that bears his name. He says, Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him, and this life gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. It's here that the whole issue pushes your understanding because being completely human and yet completely God means something different, something marvelous, something, yes, supernatural. Paul explains how Jesus laid aside his exercise of deity to become man, and that's in Philippians chapter 2 of the Bible. Was Jesus, who was born at Bethlehem and lived most of his life in the city of Nazareth, like us in the sense he was tempted and torn at times between right and wrong? The record says he was in every way tempted just as we are, yet without sin. As man, he was able to sin, but he was also able not to sin, which gives us hope as well. Amazingly, Jesus said, I forgive you, go and sin no more. Only God could do that. Many men would be God, but only one God chose to be man. Amazing yet true. When John says God loved us so much that he sent his Son, he adds something powerful. He says that whosoever believes on him should not perish or be lost, but have everlasting life. That's the bottom line. And if you miss that truth, you have missed the point of the whole issue. God loved and God gave. When you stop and think about it, the Incarnation is so grand and glorious it almost defies human comprehension. But the bottom line is God sent His Son because He loves you, and He gave His life that you might have life eternal. Read the third chapter of John. You'll find it very clear there. I'm Harold Sala, and I'd be glad to hear from you. You can send an email to Guidelines at this email address guidelines at guidelines.org. 